you've been in the Philippines about a year and a half. Yes, yes. Um, tell us about uh, your experience. Where, where is the U.S.-Philippine relationship uh, after you've been in the embassy for a year and a half? Well, thanks to President Aquino, Foreign Secretary uh, Del Rosario, and the outstanding cabinet, we have a robust relationship. Mm -hmm. um, that was just demonstrated by the reception Foreign Secretary Del Rosario got when he was here. Uh, meeting with the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, and uh, the head of our national and security. This is really important relationship. It's deep. It's a strategic partner. It's a long-term ally. It's based on our people-to-people -people ties, our democracy, the s values we share, but also on our military intelligence commitment. Uh, we are their strategic allies. We'll remain their strategic allies. We'll consult with them on all military issues, including the South China Sea. You mentioned the South China Sea. I think you know, that's something that's on a lot of people's minds here. Has the Philippines changed? It seems it's changed its uh, sort of its rhetoric, its stance on the, its, uh, its view on the South China Sea over the last year or so. What, what happened and what's different? Well, I think the Philippines has been concerned um, that they've been bullied mm. and for no reason. And what they want to do is what we uh, recommend and advise also is to resolve these incidents peacefully, to go to international court, to go to the United Nations, at the same time to improve their military and intelligence capabilities so that people can not bully them. But the important thing is that they sit down with China and the other claimant states and try to negotiate these issues peacefully uh, with restraint mm -hmm. so that there is no miscalculation, as Admiral Mullen said recently when he was in, in Beijing. And I think that's, that's important that there be no miscalculation. But the Philippines is doing what any nation would do if it were aggrieved. Hmm. In terms of uh, the U.S. presence and, and support for the Philippines' ability to, or its capacity to pr protect and, and, and uh, maintain its military you know, or, or maritime uh, awareness, domain awareness. Mm -hmm. What is the United States doing as a, as a partner? Are there some specific steps we, we're taking? Well, well, we have an ideal relationship with, on this, mm -hmm. with the Philippines on this. The Philippines understands that they need to shift their uh, military capabilities from primarily internal to uh, maritime security, domain awareness, humanitarian assistance, and disaster relief. Mm. You know, we're so happy that the Hamilton class cutter is coming to the Philippines, right. which will be renamed the Del Pilar. It'll be the 180 person ship, the largest ship in the Philippine Navy. We're looking to provide other ships over the next few years. Uh, we've provided patrol boats, we've provided 15 helicopters, We're looking where else that we may be able to assist the Philippines in this. They are the eighth largest recipient of U.S. military uh, aid in the entire world mm -hmm. and the largest in all of Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So we're, we are very much welcome this. And in fact, the other thing that we welcome is that President Aquino, Secretary Gazmin, and General Obama have pledged that this is going to be money well spent, mm -hmm. that it's going to be transparency, that equipment is going to be maintained. And that's what we need to justify to the American taxpayer that our funds are being well spent. So we're very, very happy. It's an ideal relationship. How do the Filipino people view the, the new stance the president has taken on uh, security and sovereignty? And, um, and also, could you talk a little bit about how Filipinos uh, feel about the United States? Well, I think the Filipino people have become aware recently because of the, uh, some of the incidents that have happened mm -hmm. of, of the importance of the South China Sea, of the importance of freedom of navigation, that $5 billion of trade goes through the South China Sea and Spratly Islands on an annual basis, and that, that has to be open. But let's talk about economics. Sure. Um, you know, the, could you just tell us a little bit about where the Philippines stand on you know, the, sort of the trade and investment engagement with the United States? They have a great finance secretary and Cesar Parisma, trade secretary, and uh, Gregory Domingo, uh, both educated here, worked in business here, um, gave up their private business to work 
uh, for the government. They're honest men. That said, I think they understand, as we do, mm -hmm. that there is much progress needed, mm -hmm. that the current Philippine laws inhibit foreign investment. Now, it's up to the Philippine people which way they want to go. Right. Um, it's up to them to decide. But the world is a very competitive place. Mm -hmm. And Philippines is nine of 11 states in ASEAN in, in, in business investment. And that shouldn't be given all the advantages the Philippines has. So we, uh, uh, through our partnership for growth, have invited the Philippine uh, Economic Cabinet to Washington to meet with the U.S. Trade Rep and others in September to go through their laws, chapter and verse, to see what they need to do in terms of executive orders, amendments, new laws that will allow them to eventually join the Trans-Pacific Partnership, increase their put, and keep some of the great Filipinos at home. Senators Luger, Kerry, uh, and Inhofe, and I, I know I'm missing one, uh, but they passed a Senate resolution on the 60th anniversary of the um, U.S.-Philippine Mutual Defense Treaty, and they had some ideas about um, what the U.S. and the Philippines could do to, to get that relationship a little bit closer. What, what are two or three things that you'd like to see happen uh, under your watch uh, as ambassador? as you, you know, sort of goals that you have for yourself and your team and, and the relationship? Well, three things that I would like to see clearly is more opportunities for American businesses, uh, right. reform of the court system, and continued improvement in our military relationship. And in terms of training of Filipinos, in terms of ending extrajudicial killings and successful prosecutions, but also providing uh, more military assets that are properly been maintained and utilized. Well, Ambassador Thomas, I'd like to thank you for spending a little bit of time with us here at CSIS. I wish uh, that your goals are achieved, and with your leadership, I have a high hopes that they, they could be achieved. So thank you for coming to CSIS. Thank you. Rami Salamat. Kita kits, Manila. Kita kits. See you soon. Thank you.